But now here's the here is really the beautiful part of the uh, AccuPal product. If you think about it, for many years our fathers and forefathers would take a cotton tip and hold it over the greater palatine or over the buccal anesthesia area. And what would they do? They'd put the needle next to the stick. The problem is the nerve endings, free nerve endings, could take that pain and still transfer it to the brain. What we're doing with the AccuPal, it, remember, we have the flared end where the needle will go through. This is for the palatal. And then the cup-shaped end with topical. And you don't have to use a whole lot of topical because why? We're putting it where it's really needed but almost hold it like you would hold a fountain pen and I do like to bend the needle at about a 45 degree angle that way the needle can go into the palate perpendicular versus obliquely the problem with going in obliquely is that you can tear the periosteum even though you'll get anesthesia the patient will have a lot of post-operative pain because periosteum is not vascular so it takes longer to heal kind of like hitting a nerve mm -hmm. Notice how the AccuPal is designed. There's a contra angle here, and because the end is funneled, see how easy the needle will go through the center? And we're going to apply pressure, enough pressure. See how the stem is bending, Becky? Mm -hmm. And then you can do your suction right behind me. And I'm taking the needle and just barely going right through the center. I can actually now feel soft tissue, so I'm going to slowly insert a couple of drops of anesthetic. Look at his forehead, look at his eyes. And just to show you that this is not a trick needle, you can see where we're at. We're actually in the tissue. And the objective, if you've done it properly, this is very important, you'll see a round depression like a donut with a little red dot in the center. That was amazing. Isn't that pretty cool?